What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. <clears throat> Today we're going to carry over and talk about Docker containers. Now in the previous video or in the last video we talked about containerization, the idea of containerization and how it is different or what are differences between containerization and virtual machines or virtualization. And we also talked about how it's beneficial to use Docker containers if you want to use virtualization or if you want to run applications inside an isolated environment because containerization saves up resources convenient and also secure in today's video we're going to talk about how to start building docker containers so when we talk about building docker containers we talk about following multiple steps systematic steps into finally arriving to a point where you have a, a fully deployed docker container where inside the container you could have applications running such as a web server mysql database regular applications operating systems so on and so forth so we will divide building docker containers into two uh, types the first one building docker container from scratch and the other one is building docker container by pulling the image or the uh, using a ready docker image file so what we have two types the first one or the first thing is or the first type is building docker container from scratch meaning the first thing we have to do is to create a docker file namely called a docker file the docker file is actually uh, a file that contains the instructions that will be executed once your docker is running or once your docker container is up and running now eventually the docker file forms what is called the docker container image so once we build the docker file we inform the container what are the instructions or what are the commands that will be executed once the docker container is up and running so docker file is the basic or the base building block or unit for any docker container first we have to construct this file or we can find docker files online as images we can download them and then we can start the container but if you want to build them from scratch you have to first build the docker file so as said so as you can see guys docker files can be built by understanding what are the basic commands that construct them so as you can see docker files are formatted in the following way instruction and the argument so the instructions are clearly uh, mentioned in the documentation of the uh, docker uh, website you can find all of them here but i mentioned some of them in an example below here so as you can see this is a sample docker file so we have the instruction like from work directory run run expose these cmd run these are all called instructions so we have first the instruction and then we have the argument so in this case here the instruction is from and the argument is ubuntu and the tag is 20.04 now ubuntu is the name of the image operating system and 22.04 is the tag the tag specifies the version of the image so when we say from ubuntu 22.04 it means we are using the operating system ubuntu version 22.04 and then we have the instruction work directory slash forward slash it means we are setting the working directory to the root of the container and then we have this this one so the instruction is run and apt dash get update dash y this is a command okay that gets executed so as you can see i have explanations here so run executes a command so what we're doing here we execute we are up updating the apt repository and then here we use the same instruction run to install apache so as you can see when we say run we are executing a command the command here is a linux command so depending on the operating system that is specified in the from instruction the command follows so if you are if you set the operating system to be windows you have to use windows commands here okay and after the instruction run okay expose now expose here since we are running a web server we need to run the web server on a port so expose specifies what is the port so it exposes the instruction 
and 80 is the argument happens to be the port 80 and here's cmd so what's the difference between run and cmd so basically both of them executes commands but the difference is cmd executes the command once the container starts okay once the container what the command is run when the container starts okay so this is the ready docker file now this forms the image of the docker container we want to build okay once the docker file is ready okay we are now uh ready to proceed to the next step so once we prepare the docker file we need to build the docker container so the next step is building the docker container so say that we have named the image or the docker file as yeah, so we, you can rename it uh, whatever you want. Then we build the Docker container. We use the following command, docker build. Docker build builds the container with the Docker file we just created. So docker build dash T. Now dash T here we give a name to the Docker container. Say we name it test docker. Dot specifies the path to the Docker file we created. In this case, it exists in the current working directory if it doesn't exist in the current working directory you can specify the path here uh, to the docker file once we execute this command we have successfully built the docker container we will see that in the practical scenario once we build the docker container or once we have created the docker file build the docker container now it's time to run the container okay now we run the container using the following command docker run runs the docker container dash t dash t runs the docker container in a detached mode meaning we run it in the background dash dash name apache web server here we clearly specify a name for the docker container i know we previously specified this docker but here if you want to change the name you can use dash dash name dash p 8080 specifies the port which the docker container will use since we are running a web server image okay we use port 80 so that the docker container listens on port 80 test docker this is the docker container we built okay now remember that when we built the docker container we named it test docker so here we specify the name test docker meaning we specifying that we want to run the docker container named test docker All right, so these are the three basic steps. So first, we build the Docker file, the image. Next, we build then the Docker itself, and then we run it. Okay. Now the rest are syntaxes uh, for the uh, command itself. All right. Now say you don't want to, or you don't know how to build a Docker file or an, a Docker image. So what you can do, the next option is to download the image online. Okay, so basically you can find the Docker images found online in GitHub or in the basic or in the documentation page. So here, if we have a ready Docker image, the next step is to immediately build it. Okay, so we have the image. Now it's time to build it. But how do we pull the image? How do we download a Docker image? So we have to use the command docker pull. Docker pull downloads an online uh, docker image. So docker pull and then we specify the name of the image. That's the name it goes by and that is the version of it. Okay, so Ubuntu latest. Or we specify the, the version 22.04 or we say latest. So after everything after the column specifies the tag of the image. The tag specifies, as we said earlier, it is the uh, version of the image. So once we have pulled the image, okay, and we know where we stored the image, now we go back er to the earlier steps where we start to build the Docker container. Docker build dash t test docker and here with the path to the image so that's it that's how it works now next we will come up to auditing docker images so say we have built the docker image we built the docker itself and finally we run the docker now it's time to find out whether the docker has been successfully uh, built and run so we can use the docker image ls it will list all of the available 
uh, Docker images we have created. We can remove a specific image using this command Docker image RM and we specify the event itself and the tag. All right. So let's first start by listing all of the available Docker images. Docker image ls. As you can see, we have these images. For every image, we have the repository, the tag of the image, the image ID, created, and size. Remember, I will recall that we can perform all sorts of operations on the image or the Docker image using its ID. So whenever we want to perform uh, an operation on the image, we use its ID or we use the name and the tag. Just like we mentioned earlier, if you want to remove a Docker image, we can say Docker image rm and say web server latest. This command would remove the first Docker image. Alternatively, you can specify the image ID itself. So we take this and it goes to the command line. If you want to take a look at all of the operations we can perform on the image, you can say Docker image and it will give you the help menu on what sorts of commands you can use, what sorts of operations you can perform on these Docker images, starting from listing, removing, adding, so on and so forth. As you can see, build, import, inspect, load. You can check out the help menu for more examples. All right, so now we know what are the Docker images we have. Let's now check the current working directory pwd it is slash home slash simnatic let's list all the current files all right so we have a docker file here remember that the docker file is the basic building block of a docker image so once we build a docker file okay we we can use, sorry we can use the docker file to build a ready docker image so let's take a look at the docker file and its contents remember that this is the first file that we have to create if we want to create a Docker image. So cat Docker file. Let's take a look at the file. So from Ubuntu, here we specify the operating system, run, we execute the command, apt update, we apt, we update the apt repository, and then we install Apache and its utilities. So basically, guys, as you can see here, the commands apt update and apt install they are chained together with double ampersands this is very effective if you want to minimize the build time of the docker and make it fast and then we run echo as you can see this is this displays uh, an html page and store it at index.html and then it exposes or it makes the web server listens on port 80 and then it executes the command at the start of the container so we have now a docker file that is ready Okay, we have built now a Docker file. Now it's time to convert this Docker file into a container. So the next step is to build the container. So we use Docker build. Okay, we specify a name for the Docker container. Say we name it Apache server. Okay, and then we specify the path that contains the Docker file or the image. In this case, it is the current working directory, so we use dot. As you can see now, this output demonstrates that the build or the building of the Docker container has been performed successfully. Okay. Successfully tagged Apache server latest. So now let's take a look at the current Docker images. So Docker image ls. As you can see now, the Docker file we created now transformed into an image, Apache server, right? This is the image now, and it's, it's, this is the ID, and this is the time created 21, 21 seconds ago, and this is the size and the tag latest. Now, after we built, created the Docker file, built the image, it's time now to run the Docker container. Okay, so Docker run dash dash name Apache um, say we name it web server okay and then we specify port so 
if we go up you're not expected to memorize all the commands so you can come back to the notes so p8080 so you use p8080 and then we specify the image so the image is this and now we run as you can see here we received this it means that the docker has been uh, built and run successfully now we can start the docker but how do we know what is the id what we do we, what do we use to start running the docker container so we can use docker ps-a to list all of the docker containers that are running and also the docker containers that have been stopped as well okay as you can see we see a list of all the docker containers that are running as you can see we see our docker container apache server running okay we can see the time it was created 44 seconds ago the status it is up up to 43 seconds and this is the ports and this is the other names used now this is the container id so what we can do here we can say docker okay start and we can use the name of the docker uh, the id sorry so now it started if you want to stop the docker containers we can use docker stop So now let's go back. As you can see here, when we listed the available Docker containers, we see our Docker container Apache server now exited four seconds ago. So Docker PS-A is very useful command, guys, to list all of the containers running and those also who have uh, stopped. If you want to run the Docker back, you can just say Docker start and it will run again so now it is up two seconds these are very essential uh, basic operations you have guys to be familiar with if you want to uh, be be kind of fluent when you are pen testing an environment that uses docker containers so these are the basic commands guys that are very common if you want to deal create and configure and run docker containers all right so let's use docker ps a one more time and see the available docker containers let's now stop the apache web server docker stop All right, so now you've seen how we create Docker files, build Docker images, and run Docker containers. Now it's time to find out how we can interact with Docker containers. So now we know that a Docker container is running, but it is running in the background. I want to interact with this Docker container. So what, what should I do? I can say docker run dash it, which is a mode or an option that we can use to interact with the container. Then we specify the, the image. So the image is Apache server. Okay. And then we say we want to we need to specify the command. So what kind of command we want the, to execute with the container, what the container want the container to execute. So say bin bash, we want to spawn a shell. So this will spawn a shell. As you can see, this is the host name of the container now. So right now, as you can see, the prompt or the shell changed from the username to the host name of the container so if you type id as you can see this is the root now many times or often times we see this when we pen test docker containers we land on our server or a target machine and we see this prompt and we think that we rooted the machine but in fact this is not the actual root user however it is the host name of the docker container so this is the root of the container pwd will display the, con the, the working directory of the container ls-la will list all of the containers files so the the existence of the docker environment means that we are inside a docker container so now it's 
in during pen testing when we see this okay we are definite that this is a docker container okay uh, so basically if you are pen testing your objective is to escape this docker shell this one okay um, if we cat the docker environment file so there is nothing inside the docker environment file if we run docker commands ps dash a so as you can see command not found because we are inside the docker itself we have to escape the docker shell to be able to uh, list all of the information about the running and stopped docker containers so if you scroll down here in the notes i have listed all of the all of these indications that you are dealing with a docker container in this paragraph the concept of pen testing docker containers how they are compromised uh, indications of a docker container the existence of the docker environment file how to enumerate and escape strategies so from the perspective of pen testing when we see this we are inside docker container the objective is to escape it okay guys so this is how we create and run docker containers now sometimes you want more complex use cases of docker containers for example a docker container we created was well, just a simple web server sometimes you want to run a complete web application that requires not only a web server but also requires a database such as mysql so in that case you will have to create more than one container and simply this means that you cannot scale up if you want to create more complex applications so what's the solution for that the solution is we use docker compose so docker compose is a method to run multiple containers once and all together and at the same time we connect them using a network so you can go to the documentation and write here docker compose so try docker compose you can see instructions on how to uninstall the docker compose and how to get started but simply to get started with docker compose say you have uninstalled the docker compose you have to create something called the docker compose file which is written in yaml language it's extremely important to write this file before you run docker compose because it specifies all the docker containers that you wish to run and connect together an example is here so as you can see same as docker file we have instructions version services networks environment image these are all instructions after the instructions we have the argument the same as docker file but here in the docker compose file we specify the docker containers we want to build for example in this file here we specify the version and then the services instruction specifies the containers we want to connect the first container is web and the other one is database build will build the docker container that's specified for uh, to be web server and this is the name of the image networks instruction should be the same test commerce the normal instruction is an instruction that is used to connect both containers together the web and database and actually they need to be connected because an application that doesn't connect to its database would not work so you need to connect them with the networks instruction and here the ports the web server for example runs on port 80 then we come to the database we use the image mysql latest so basically mysql latest is an image that is not created from scratch it's actually uh, online so the image and the tag is when we see the image and the tag specified it means you want to download or pull the image online so the networks and then the environments here specify the variables or parameters of the connection database name the username and the password and lastly we use the instruction networks to indicate that we have connected these containers together after we specified the docker compose file the next step is to <coughs> run the 
containers together. So we can use Docker Compose, build, and start. <laughs> okay, or one command will be Docker Compose up. You can use stop and down to both stop or stop and delete the container together. So guys, you can also come back to the Docker Compose documentation and check out the details if you want more details. Okay guys, so that was it. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I will definitely see you in the next video. Oh, don't forget that you might be asking me how to get these notes. You can subscribe to the channel membership and get access to the online portal in addition to PDF files stored in Google Drive. So that was it guys. I will see you in the next video.